Jeez, dude. They actually have. They've took the story and they've fucking changed it, man. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, there's so many things to talk about, man. So the timeline is split and this is different? Dude, fucking Biggs is alive. Biggs and Wedge are alive. Implying that fucking Zack survives? Implying that Zack is alive somewhere? So Mrs. Wolfie came in and spoke to me yesterday about potentially about them keeping Aerith alive. And I said there, I was like, there's no way they can keep Aerith alive in the next game. Because there's so much stuff that happens, right? It's not even a spoiler to discuss this anymore because the game is looking like it's going to change, right? So in the original, Aerith dies, right? Spoilers, the game's been out for fucking 20 years or whatever, right? But it doesn't even matter now because who knows what the fuck's going to happen. I said to Mrs. Wolfie, I was like, Aerith can't... They can't keep Aerith alive because there's so much of the game... They're, like they, they, they would have to reanimate and reimagine, and the story would completely change because Aerith's death affects what Cloud does in Final Fantasy VII, and it affects how he reacts to Sephiroth and everything that happens. And I said to her, I was like, "There's no way they're going to keep Aerith alive. There's no way because it would change everything." But now, now I'm like, like, what? Yeah. They might still kill her. Of course! But, like, we don't know now. So when I was doing the fight at the end, you fight the giant monster and then Sephiroth appears. I didn't expect to have to fight Sephiroth. Because I just thought, there's no reason for Sephiroth to be there, right? Because in the original, why do you fight Sephiroth? At various points of the game. I need to discuss spoilers here, guys. So if you don't want to... If you don't want to listen to this, don't listen to it. Tune out now, right? But I'm going to talk about the original and what happens, right? So in the game... Cloud is trying, he's been tormented by Genova, right? Basically, Genova is alive and she uses hallucinations and she uses pieces of herself to form images of Sephiroth. And the reason Cloud is affected by this is because Cloud is being infused with parts of Sephiroth's DNA and Genova's DNA and they're all connected, right? So Cloud is constantly traveling, haunted by these visions of Sephiroth. So it's in Cloud's mind, but like, we just fought a battle where everybody fought Sephiroth, and I'm like, well, what is the explanation for that? How do they explain that Sephiroth appears there and you, and you fight him on the highway? And the whole arbiters of fate and things changing up and shit, it's like... Dude, I, I, I'm i not against it, by the way. I'm not angry or anything, just completely taken aback that they would try something so fucking bold. It is so weird. Maybe it'll stay roughly the same, or maybe they'll change it. Who knows? I wonder if even they know what the fuck they want to do. Here's some cutscenes, guys. Check this shit out. <laughs> You're going to have two different canon storylines from now on, though. It's like they're changing the lore. It's not bad, I don't think. And it makes it really exciting to know that now, right, everybody who has played along this playthrough blind, right? Like, let's say you've not played Final Fantasy VII before, you've heard the hype, you go into it completely clueless, you pick up the remake and you play this game that we've just finished playing. Those people would not know what happens in the rest of Final Fantasy VII, but now nobody knows what happens in the rest of the journey. I've been saying all the way through the game, oh, this happens in the original, I wonder if they'll keep it the same in this game. And for the most part, it's been almost identical. The only thing that's changed throughout the main game that we've just played is the fact that Wedge is alive. And then suddenly, at the end, it's like, okay, the Dementors were there all the way through, and the Dementors were kind of interesting, but didn't really do much. You were just like, oh, maybe they'll tie this into the story with Sephiroth. But they really took the Dementors and, like, blew that up into something huge at the end. I thought they were going to take the Dementors, the ghosts, and I thought they were going to, like, slowly tone it down, you know? I thought they were going to, like, tone it down, and then maybe they would put it in. Oh, there's a Clotie scene, by the way. Smoochy, smoochy. Maybe they would put it in just for the sake of adding a bit of extra spice. But they took that, they took the runway at the end, you fought the, the biker monsters, 
and then you fight against the giant spectre monster with all the ghosts, and then fucking you fight Sephiroth. I don't understand, you know, I don't un understand why the Sephiroth fight exists. Everybody fights him. Who are, who are they fighting there? Because it's a physical manifestation, right? It's not in their brains, I don't think. Like, they actually fight a physical something. It's not THE Sephiroth, it can't be THE Sephiroth, because he is... He is not there, okay? We won't get into too much detail, but Sephiroth is in the north part of the world at right, right now, and he's cryo-frozen, okay? All the Sephiroths that you see in the original Final Fantasy VII is Genova fucking with Cloud's brain. It's never actually Sephiroth. There is moments where, like, Sephiroth's sword stabs President Shinra, and you're like, wait, how the fuck does that actually happen, and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's just Genova taking on Sephiroth's form. Sephiroth is never actually there himself. So, for him to appear at the end, I'm like, is that Genova? Is that the, the Dementors? Is that the fate? Is it the fact that because we're on a completely different timeline, that is actually the Sephiroth? Because how the fuck does that make any sense? Such a theatre girl. Main theories online are that Sephi has come back from the future to change the past and will split the timeline. <laughs> Jesus, dude. What was the bit at the end about, you know when Sephiroth and Cloud were fighting and they were in space? How the fuck did that happen? How the fuck did they get there? What? On one hand, you're trying to make sense of reality, but then when they do that, when when Sephiroth and, and Cloud are fighting in space, you're like, wait, what's actually going on here? Where's the, where's the, where are you drawing the line here? I'm trying to solve, I'm trying to actually piece together the, the clues. What the fuck are you doing here, Squeenix? Do you just make shit up as you go? This was a great moment, by the way, Aerith and, uh, Aerith and her red dress. I think Aerith is a... Uh, I grew to like Aerith a lot in this remake, a lot more than I did in the original. Um, I never hated Aerith, but I was always a Clothe guy, right? I always thought Tifo and Cloud were canon, I always thought Aerith and Zack were canon, and, you know, it all just kind of works itself out that way, so... When Cloud and Aerith kind of chat each other up, it's kind of cute and funny, but, like, I never really thought, you know... It's like fucking Goku dating Bulma or some weird shit, right? It just doesn't make any sense. So... When I came into this, I was like, oh, Aerith's gonna be alright, I'm gonna try and talk to her and see what happens, but she's actually such a likeable character. Like, you feel genuinely, like, happy for the characters and sad. Here's my boy Rude, by the way. Fucking Rude. Best boss fight in the game, don't at me. Rude was great, dude. I'm actually so in love with that guy, dude. He's brilliant. He's so funny. See, when he first appeared, dude, I was like, oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. What are the ghosts' purpose in the original? Um, it might be a clone of Sephiroth, like number 2 or number 49. So, there, no, 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 no. There's two different things going on there, Kai. So, the ghosts didn't exist at all in the original. The hooded figures, i.e. in this game, the sick gentleman. You know, right at the start, Cloud had a sick roommate. The guy next door was ill. And then, later on, there was the guy in the hooded fi the, the hood with the, the tattoos. Those guys are in the original. Those guys are completely canon, right? Those are in the first, the first game. All those guys who walk about with tattoos, that, that have hoods and they go about and they're like, oh, I'm so sick, <clears throat> the reunion, the reunion. Those guys are in the original. You meet them all the way through the game. Those are, those are cloned, failed soldiers that Hojo has created. And again, similarly to Cloud, they all have Sephiroth's blood in them. The numbers on their tattoos represent the failures, the failed experiments. Cloud doesn't have a tattoo, right? As far as I'm aware, I don't, I don't remember him having a tattoo. I don't think he has one, right? All of those guys are failed experiments, and the reason they're all sick is because, well, they've all got Mako poison and stuff, but they're all connected to Sephiroth and Genova. So, when Genova's fighting in the in the Shinra building there, you know how uh, all, somebody stole Genova's body out of the tank and then ran away and they jumped off the building with it? Those guys are all connected to Genova because she, they're all created with her DNA in them, so she can, all, she can communicate with all of them. The reunion is like all of Genova's cells from like all over the planet like merging together. To try and like kill the planet basically. Um, Genova's got its own agendas, but it's a bit fucked up. Um, the ghosts weren't in the original. I think the ghosts and and the, the hooded guys are two different things. They're two different entities, just to make that clear. If Aerith dies in the next game, we're going to be real pissed. I never imagined that they would keep Aerith alive, but we don't know now. I am still I want to say that I am like 65 to 70 percent sure that Aerith will still die. I I don't think they'll kill her. I, I, I don't think they'll keep her alive. I think they're kind of baiting you a little bit to thinking that she might, but I am like, I am still sure they're gonna kill her. It would be so bizarre for them not to. But who knows? Maybe there's a 40 percent chance, a, a fucking 45 percent, 35 percent chance she lives. I don't know. 
Um, do you make do you miss do you just make shit up as you go? Lol, three words, Kingdom Hearts timeline. Well, there's that too. Yeah. It's when Reno is about to shoot Tifa and then Rude nudges the helicopter to the left and is like, "Oops, I didn't. <laughs> I don't want to bang Tifa." Or Rude does want to bang Tifa. It's so true. There's actually there's little um, hints in in Final Fantasy VII, little sneaky moments that you can actually engage with the Turks or you can completely miss them. There's a bunch of times in the original PS1 game where when you are travelling around the world and doing stuff, the Turks appear in little locations. They turn up. One time they're in Wutai on holiday, one time you meet them somewhere else, and if you meet them at a certain little village, there's actually Zach. Zach's got a tiny hometown in Final Fantasy VII that you can go and visit his mum and dad, right? It's really cute. You don't have to go there, there's not a lot there, there's a couple of bits of materia and stuff, right? If you go there at the right time, you can actually bang into the Turks. And they're having a conversation about who they fancy. And Reno talks about how he fancies Aerith. And then they're like trying to grill Re uh, Rude. But Rude never really says much. He's a quiet guy. And they're like, Rude, who do you fancy? And he's like, mm -hmm. Tifa's, Tifa's alright. Tifa's quite hot. So the bit in this game where he nudges the helicopter to protect Tifa, I thought was perfect. Because it's such a rude thing to do. And they, they paid attention to that. And they like they added that in. You know, really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, yeah, fake ghosts and black cloaks are different, says Jcram. Yep, absolutely. I think they're going to give us choices in the next game to either follow the original story or to make changes. Do you guys think so? That seems like so much work for them, you know? Think about the project that they've taken on, right? They're making a lot of money here, so maybe the budget's going to go up and up and they'll, they'll continue to do mad shit. But, like, if they give you the choice, right, there's, there is a reason why that's cool. Because if you give the players the choice... The hardcore fans, the purists that want the exact same carbon copy of a remake where Aerith dies and Sephiroth, you fight him at the end and blah blah blah, right? Those fans can be happy because they can choose it. Or, if you want to choose to keep Aerith alive, you can choose to keep Aerith alive. As long as the, as the, as long as the choices are clear. Imagine you're a purist and you're trying to kill Aerith and make the, the original timeline go through and then Aerith fucking survives. You'd be fucking raging, wouldn't you? If they make the choices clear, that would be super fucking cool. I already know what I would do. Um, I already know what I would do if you, if you get given the choice. But here's the thing. If they decide to do that, that is so much work because you have to start creating two different storylines. Like you've got the fork in the path, maybe right up to the end of the game, everything's the same for everybody. And then at the end, you get two branching stories. You're going to need to have animated cutscenes for Aerith surviving and animated cutscenes for Aerith dying. And the rest of, like, however much more left of the game is after that point, you're going to have to animate the whole thing. It's two different loads. Maybe that's why they wanted to segment it in episodes, because they actually knew they were going to do that from the beginning. They are different stories, but... Eris' death is canon, so there's that, says Transient. Is it confirmed that there is going to be a part 2 for this, or will it be a DLC kind of thing? No, Kai, this will absolutely have a part 2, and probably a part 3. Maybe just a part 2, but I think they'll have a part 2 and 3. They will absolutely be- they'll be making- they'll be working on it right now. There's no way. There's no way. This is abs- they'll be bringing out part 2. It's called Final Fantasy VII Remake for some fucking reason. I don't know why they didn't call it Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1. Um, but there will absolutely be more to come. This game has probably sold really well, and it has probably done really well in the reviews. There's no way that they're not going to make the next part of this. It'll be getting, it'll be in production right now. Who knows how long we'll have to fucking wait for it? Probably another fucking five years, but yeah, it's not going to be a branching story. They are different stories. Defeated Sephiroth had it paused to talk. Sefi said, "You have seven seconds. It's up to you what you do with the seven seconds." Was the uh, seven seconds was the time Aerith had had to cast Holy? You think so? Is that, that's like a, that must be a fan theory, right? Before she was killed, Aerith has seven seconds to cast Holy. Is that real? Zero chances, Jcram. So you don't think they'll give players the choice? You just think that they'll, you just think that they'll fucking, they'll just have a game and it'll be a different timeline. So the Whispers are basically the defenders of the original game plot. I feel like they'll expand on this in the next game. Mm -hmm. The whispers, so the, the, the Dementors, the ghosts, we'll call them the ghosts. So the ghosts are basically the defenders of the original game plot. I feel like they'll expand on this in the next game. Well, I don't think that the... Well, maybe, I guess so. Yeah, because there was a bit where Tifa and Barrett and Red 13 were in the van. They were going to crash into a fire explosion and the, the spirits protected them, didn't they? Hmm. 
Well, the spirit, did we defeat the ghosts? That's the thing. See, at the end of that game, right, where we fought the giant ghost monster, it was all the ghosts in Midgar all flew together, right? The defenders of fate, they all flew together and they made a big monster. Did we kill them? Uh, does that mean they're not coming back? Do, are they going to return as another mass? I don't fucking know. Where did they even come from? Where did the defenders of fate even come from? Like, what? what is there? How did they tie into the story? How does that work? Resident Evil 4 remake is in the work, as is Resident Evil 8. Yeah, I saw Resident Evil 4 at remake is in the works, yeah. Part 2 will be about 100 quid on PS5. She was cast in Holy for like a day. No, it's not. Uh, it's too much work to put in a game. I think so too, but then they did split it up in episodic parts. And we don't know when the next part's going to be out, so who's to say that they might not, but... Oh man, that was mental. 